You know, 30 Miles Out gear is here. Check it out at 30milesout.com. What? You're watching 30 Miles Out Kayak Fishing TV. So sit back, relax a while, and come on the next kayak fishing adventure with your host, Ty Sutherland. Kayaks for Ty and Teresa provided by Mariner Sales, Wind, and Paddle Sports. 30 Miles Out brought to you more by Line Cutters, changing the way you cut fishing line. And by Yak Attack, rigging the dream. By Ride On Trailer Company, Rattle Trap, Smith Optics, the Backwater Paddle Company, maker of the new Assault. And by The Fish Grip, get your best grip. And by Hook One. Get 10% off with code word 30 miles out at kayakfishinggear.com because they're that way. I mean, they are that way. Yeah, that's right for sure. Hey, let's take the kayaks out on Coletto Creek Reservoir outside of Goliad, Texas and see what we can't find right here on 30 miles out. What? So the white bass are busting everywhere and I figured I'll just keep trying stuff till I figure them out. I threw small crankbaits, I threw small rattle traps, I threw small topwater, I threw small spoons. I thought I could finesse them. The white bass were not biting. So I decided to move on to what I know, black bass. Large mouth and start working the structure with soft plastics doing some finesse fishing. Knock it off. You're embarrassing me on the show. It is Valentine's Day. These white bass are blowing up, but I couldn't figure them out. I've tried everything in my box, they won't hit nothing. Logo. Whoa. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Throw my favorite sluggo, tiki stick, whatever you want to call them. Most versatile bait. Love it, love it. Get over here, get over here, get over here. Come on, you. <laughs> I knew, look at those cattails behind me, man. I knew there had to be something up in there. You. Come on out. I'm gonna need my needle nose on this one. All right. So what am I doing? I'm just running this bank line and I'm throwing a sluggo with no weight. I guess it's not Texas rig if you don't use a weight. And I've been changing out a lot of lures trying to figure them out, but it got real grassy, so bam, that's what I'm talking about. I haven't been bass fishing in a while, y'all. I'm at Coletto Creek Reservoir uh, just outside of Goliad, Texas. And that's a beautiful little bass. Boom, what? I'm telling you, you're watching 30 miles out. Just let it revive him a little bit. Here you go. That's awesome. I'll show you what I'm doing. So here we go. I got a fresh sluggo to show y'all. I'm going to take the sluggo. Um, I like these darker colors in this dark water. But uh, puncture enough through there before I pop my hook out to cover the eye and this swivel and I need a taut line to do that so as I'm sliding it up over everything I'm twisting just like you do normally with a worm hook 
and then you're gonna end up with something like that. See, I got everything's covered, my line, my swivel. I'm only doing that because I'm changing out baits a lot and I just don't want to tie straight to the line. So then I skin hook it on the side, squanch it up a little bit, and just bury that point in that barb just barely in the side. And I find that's better than going all the way through and skin hooking it because once that hook busts loose, you have the whole hook exposed. And I find my hookup ratio is much better. Learned that from a buddy of mine that did the bass tournament trail. All right, let's get back in these reeds and see if we can find a Kaleido Creek Reservoir in Goliath, Texas. Let that slug go just sink a little bit and twitch, twitch. This rod's a little soft to be doing this, but it works. Twitch, twitch. You can feel the grass. What's going to happen is if you haven't. Got another one. Got another one. Heck yeah. You feel the line go taut. It's a little guy, but we got another one, folks. Heck yeah. All right. Come on now. Yeah. Boom! They are up in those reeds thick. But, uh, there you go. And, uh, slide that back up over there. Keep this thing as weedless as possible. Make a twist. Skin hook it on the side. Something like that. And, uh, I'm gonna chunk it back up in that grass. I'm just gonna keep on working these little pockets in the reeds. Finesse fish in a worm. My buddy David Strum is the king of kayak bass fishing. Or he was 10 or 15 years ago. There's a lot of new guys, but he, he's just a, a monster bass fisherman when we started fishing out of kayaks. He taught me a lot of this finesse stuff with the worms. Shout out to David, my old fishing buddy, David Strum. All right. So I'm just waiting for that bump, bump, bump. I let him take it a little bit, let him take it, drop my rod tip, let him swim off. Wham! Set the hook. The tendency with, uh, Plastic worm fishing, if you've never done it, finesse fishing, is when you feel the bump bump, when you feel the bump bump, just set the hook. But really, they're, once they hit it, they do that little bump bump. You want to you wanna either give them a little bit of line or let them take line. They're going to start to swim off with it. When they start to swim off with it and your line goes tight, bam, that's when you set the hook. So bump bump, give them line, give them slack. Let them swim off, your line goes tight. Because they're trying to take it home. They always do that. They kill it with that first hit, and then they try to take it off. That's what we're doing here on Coletta Creek Reservoir. Go at yeah, Texas. Bass fishing out of the kayak. The most versatile way to fish in the world, baby. Yeah, I got another one. It's like four or five. Four or five. Run down about. Fluke works, too. This is a gulp fluke. Doing just as good as that worm was. Ooh, you had to have it. You had to have it. Come on now, come on now. Get up over here. Say hi to Uncle Ty. Yes, indeed, le doodle. Bass fish, Glad Creek. I took my gulp though, and those are expensive, man. I'm trying to teach Teresa how to bass fish here. She's uh, frustrated. frustrated. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Probably wondering what I got here on my finger. This is a this is a line cutter's ring, and uh, the Velcro is on your finger, and looks a little something like that. And you put it on finger of your choice. Teresa likes it on her thumb, and you just run that line across that ring on either side, and boom, it cuts it. So I just snap, just like that. I've cut, it'll cut up to 80 pound braid folded over four times. Check out the video on YouTube of Vance, the owner of the company, cutting 80 pound braid folded over. Hot knife through butter, works great. It's handy to have on your hand at all times. Especially when you're changing out a lot of baits and whatnot. Line cutters. You frustrated, Teresa? A little bit. You gonna learn? Yes, you are. So we're, today we're going to say, I can be a bass fisherman. Right, the reason I leave that snap sool on there with that plastic worm is uh, I'm a non-denominational fisherman. <laughs> I am not breed or species specific. I go after whatever's happening. And in this lake, I saw a lot of white bass popping. 
a lot of sand bass and, and it's sand bass season early 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 spring and I was trying to figure them out so I was switching out a lot of baits and then I saw some good black bass some largemouth bass hat some largemouth bass habitat so I started switching to crank baits and soft plastics and uh, so I'm going from hybrids to white bass sand bass to to black bass and uh, we were running trot lines for catfish earlier so uh, kind of doing it all that's why I leave the snap swivel on there because if I feel like I need to switch to a spoon right now because some hybrids are around or if something starts blowing up and I want to put on a top water I can do it quick and easy with that snap swivel oh, oh. gummit, he spit it and took my worm man uh. I didn't get rolling in time. Get, didn't get the camera rolling in time. Look, you took my darn worm. <clears throat> All right, I didn't think they would be on this dam, this hard embankment, but I guess they are. So, what am I throwing right now? I got two more. It's like a sluggo. Um, this one's made by Big Bite Baits. That's what it is, baby. Dark with a chartreuse tail can't go wrong. I like the. What the what? Oh, thank goodness. Look, I just dropped my little black flag. The lid just came off. But the sucker floated. Oh, must be all my awesome sponsors floating that. Dang, oh man. I need to tie my black pack thing back on. So then Teresa came out and joined me, and she started finding the fish. Hi, the philosopher. <laughs> She said I can, and so she did. There it is. Wow, he's about, he's about to come off. He's skin hooked. Yeah, good job. That's one of your biggest bass. Yeah, it is. There you go. Look at that, pretty. Let me backwater my way over there. Look at here, look at here. Ooh. How'd you do it, Teresa? We I don't know. <laughs> you, you didn't, well you, did you do like I was telling you? Yeah, I did it like you told me. Did you feel him bump it? I did. Yeah. See, I was teaching her how to finesse fish that worm. And when they bump it, you know, let them take it a little bit, right? Yeah. Throw that worm right there, right? Yeah. All right, you gonna let him go? Yeah. Off he goes. Good job, honey. All right, let's do some more bass fishing on Coletta Creek Reservoir, Goliath, Texas. You know, a kayak is a perfect bass fishing tool because the, especially, you know, with a, with a bladed paddle or even with a Mirage Drive, it's, it's very much akin to a troll motor running on very, very low, like setting one in a bass boat. Um, you're just inching along real slow, so you can really, uh, especially with finesse fishing, you can work each stump, rock, hump, drop off and just finesse your way down the bank line working structure and uh, you're not gonna be able to take off and run like this guy but you'll be able to fish your way to wherever he's going very slowly and methodically and a lot of times we'll end up with just as many fish without the gas bill and without having to haul a 20-foot boat somewhere which is what that is it's a 20-foot bay boat so bam that's what's up Love the kayak fishing, y'all. Love it. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. He's jumping, too. Come on, now. All right. Got another one. Bass fishing. That's what I'm talking about. That's my fluke way up the line. pound braid with a 17 pound mono leader worm hook and now I have switched to a gulp gulp fluke Here you go. I felt him taking it and I let him take it that's a nice one you got my last sluggo Valentine's Day. I gave her my last slug. Can't get it out of the mouth or what? 
How'd you catch him, Teresa? Oh, with a, with a worm. Twitch, twitch. Twitch, twitch. Twitch, twitch. Let him take it. Senko. Twitch, twitch. Boom. He's a Valentine's bass. <laughs> Good job. Valentine's Day bass. Texas catching bass on soft plastics. Be quiet, loud boat. We're catching just as many fish as they are. We ain't making all that racket. You gonna let him go? Yep. Here he goes. Yay! Number two. Not too sharp. Here we go. Here we go. Fish on. Fish on. Come on now. There we go. On half a worm. Look at that. Fish in a micro worm. Tearing it up. They have been bumping it out there on that bank line, but I just haven't been able to catch them. Mm-hmm. I see you. Got your acrobatics. Let me get y'all straight. There we go. It's been a fun day out here on Coletta Creek. Caught a few nice ones. See if we can catch a few more before the sun sets. Perfect example of the usefulness of this backwater paddle. I threw up in these cattails and got hung up. I did not want to go in there. It finally came undone. Now I can just ease myself back out without having to grab that big paddle. Just ease myself out a little bit and I can keep fishing these cattails. Backwater paddle strikes again. He was smacking it coming in. That's hilarious. I didn't know what that was. I thought I had some crud on my line. Well, everybody, it's been an awesome day out here in Coletto Creek, Coletto Creek Reservoir. This lake is loaded with bass, white bass. Saw a lot of catfish caught today on trot line. It's been a beautiful day fishing freshwater right here. 30 miles out. See y'all next time. Oh, val the Valentine's Day episode. That's right. Tell them, Teresa. It's not Day. <laughs> Oh, good. Good on you. Say something for you, What's up, John Sutherland? We out here fishing some bells. <laughs> Not a fish taco. Not a fish taco. <laughs> Why are you doing that? Do Teresa and I love to kayak fish? Most definitely. But sometimes it's just about hanging out and having a great time with friends and family. So until next time, keep your paddles wet, and we'll see you right here on 30 Miles Out.